All right. So we're going to get to the quails, but I'm going to give you a quick answer about what about the leaves and the healing nations and the trees with 12 fruits. All right. Hold on. We're going to do the sacrament of Yahushua. Shabbat is coming down. The sun is down. So let us do the sacrament of Yahushua, the body, the bread, the wine, the blood. And then we're going to eat cousin the quail <laughs> with some veggies on the side. I'll be right back, Israel. Hold on. All right, so I'm gonna answer the quick question. What about the leaves for the healing of the nations and the trees with 12 fruit? Well, they don't understand what's gonna happen to the world when the kingdom is manifest. They think that the whole world is gonna be the kingdom. No, there's only a preserved place that's gonna be reserved where the kingdom is dwelling and that's where the 144 is. And all those nations will have what? Incurred some kind of what? Damage to the land based upon Yah's wrath that's gonna hit the whole world. Not the first wrath, the second, the final wrath at the seventh trump. And so the whole world is going to be decimated with nuclear radiation and all of that, fire burn, all of that. And there will be survivors. And those survivors have to do what? They have to come and seek us for that light, right? And they're looking for what? For rain to be what? Given on their land. They're coming to learn the ways of Yah to what? To cleanse their land. Well, who's coming? us right if Yahoshua is the tree then what's the leaves okay all right Psalms 1 1 through 3 now I did one because sometimes I like let's play around with the different versions of it usually I go straight to the Hebrew but for some reason I couldn't get into the Hebrew efficiently happy is the man who does not follow the advice of the wicked or take the path of sinners or join a group of mockers. That would be us not following Jediah uh, or Malachi inside of Yaki or Yaki inside of Malachi or any one of these Negroes that's giving wicked advice. Go ahead, you can bang them. Just write her a love letter and that's your wife. Yeah, you can have two wives with no paperwork. Yeah, Genesis 1 and 29 diet. You going to hell to be me? I'm just trying to tell you to live right now. This is wicked advice, y'all. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the ways of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. That would be them. Blessed or fortunate or prosperous and favored by Elohim is the man who does not walk in the counsel of wicked, following their advice and example, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit down to rest in the seat of scoffers or ridiculers. That would be them. But they delight in the law of Yahweh, meditating on it day and night. He will be a tree firmly planted by streams of waters. What is Revelations talking about, y'all? Hmm. Which yields its fruit in season well, right there's there's 12 months for season right right so it's going out four ways right but it's 12 matter of fruit in each month and it's leaf what the he the he has fruit the he is a tree when he stands in the council which means x which means tree of Yahweh's law, which is the word of Yah, which is Yahushua, for every man shall sit underneath his fig and his tree. You know they keep reading that wrong, right? They don't know what that means. It means everyone is going to stand underneath the shadow, shade, image, cell of his tree, his vine, and his fig. Who's the his? Yahoshua in his image. When we do that, we become a tree firmly planted. When we sit in the council, the X, the tree of Yah, by streams of waters. What waters? Who's the living waters? Yahoshua. They're supposed to guide us to those quiet waters, which yields its fruit in season, and its leaf does not wither. And in whatever he does, this is in the kingdom, he shall prosper. The wicked, those who live in disobedience, 
to Elohim's law are not so, but they are like the chaff, worthless and without substance, which the wind blows away. Up, oh, that song's stop, stop, y'all. Oh my goodness, that's all the songs, right? Wow, we ain't got much book left, y'all. Malachi has went to another book. He has nothing left. Okay, so that's the answer right there. I don't want to give too much. That's the answer right there. What about the trees? We the healing of the nation. We the leaves that he's going to send out to come and says, see the light and bow down. Where they bow it down to? Our feet, y'all. But where did we bow down to? His image, his feet. We follow after his shape. We're the tree and we're the fruits that bear what? The fruits of the spirit. And it would never fail. That's right. You tell them. That's right. She talking up in here. What about the quail? All right, Israel. We're going to go into the story of quail. And we're going to find out once again. What are we going to find out? That Yaki inside of Malachi is lying on the script. That's why he wants you to burn it. He wants to just read a quote here and then have you rip it apart and listen to him and don't go back and read to find out what happened. So we're going to go into the two accounts. How many of y'all knew that there was two accounts of the quit? Two accounts. So we're going to read both accounts and every account that talks about the quail and let's see what happened. Was it the quail? Was it about the meat? Was it defiled? Did it kill them? Mm -hmm. All right. So I went through this through the 10 temptations. All of y'all that don't know my lessons, go back and look at the 10 temptations, right? And the 10 temptations is everything that he's trying to take us through now for a purpose. But the third temptation, right? The third temptation complain for meat and bread. So meat and bread. Okay, let's see. Exodus 16. Now, Exodus 16 is not the same incident as Numbers 20, I believe it is. I could be wrong, right? One, they took their journey for Elim, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came to the wilderness of sin, which is between Elim and Sinai on the 15th day of the second month. So that was brand new them coming out. After their departing out of the land of Egypt, the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said to them, we wish that we had died in the hand of Yahweh in the hand of Egypt when we sat by the meat pots, when we ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us into the wilderness to kill a whole assembly with hunger. All right. For then Yahweh said to Moshe, behold, I will rain bread from the sky for you. And the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day that I may test them. Even the bread, y'all, was a test, not just the meat. Even the bread was a test, whether they will walk in my law or not. It shall come to pass on the sixth day that they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Moshe and Aaron said to all the children of Israel at evening, then you shall know that Yahweh has brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning, then you shall see the glory of Yahweh. Because he hears your murmuring against Yahweh. Who are we that you shall murmur against us? So, eight, Moses said, now Yahweh shall give you meat to eat in the evening. And in the morning, bread to satisfy you. Because Yahweh hears your murmuring, which you murmur against him. And who are we? Your murmuring is not against us, but against Yahweh. Even though they murmured for meat and bread, Yah didn't have a problem with giving it to them. He intended to give it to them. But they were not murmuring. They were not asking, right, with the right spirit. They was complaining. And up until this point, Yah still sustained them. And they were complaining, saying, we're going to die, right? And this is not to know Yah. So first he had to test them. He wants to show them the glory. He wants to test them. And he's going to give them what will satisfy them, right? So he gave them flesh in the evening 
and bread in the morning. What does that represent? It represented Yahushua. He came in the flesh. You ate that in the evening, but in the morning, right? He's going to be what? The bread of life to you. And that was to see the glory of Yah. No curse here, y'all. Though we murmured, because we thought we was going to die because we didn't have the food, right? We was murmuring for hunger's sake. It wasn't for lust of just the meat. It was just for hunger altogether, right? Moses said to Aaron, tell all the congregation of the children of Israel, come near before Yahweh, for he has heard your murmuring. But right before this, what was the second temptation? What was the murmuring about then? Water. Did he not intend to give them water? He was just waiting to see, to humble them, right? To put their faith and approach him with gratitude and all of their, their, their substance and, and, and life in him. But they murmured about not having water. There's a difference. He, he intended to give them water, but it was a test because they was like, you brought us out here to thirst and die. Now they didn't have food. You brought us out here to hunger and die. So murmuring is different from asking Yah and waiting on Yah, right? This was, this is how he had to humble them, right? Moses said to Aaron, tell all the congregation of the children of Israel, come near before Yahweh, for he has heard your murmuring. It happened as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the children of Israel that they looked toward the wilderness and behold, the glory of Yah appeared in the cloud. It was coming, y'all. Now, if the quail was defilement to them, if it was wicked for them, how could they have now stood in the glory of Yah in the morning? That don't make no sense. Couldn't have. If the quail was a defilement to their bodies, then why would he promise them after eating the quail, you're going to see the glory and the cloud of Yah appear in the morning after you finish eating the bread, eating the meat, and now the bread in the morning. That's crazy, y'all. Nothing was wrong with the quail. Yahweh spoke to Moshe saying, I have heard the murmuring of the children of Israel. Speak to them saying, at even you shall eat meat. And in the morning you shall be filled with bread. And you shall know that I, Yahweh, your Elohim, I am Yahweh, your Elohim. That was a proven and tested that I can feed you whatever you need. Stop complaining. No curse there, though it was a humbling experience. Nothing wrong with the quail, y'all. 22, and it happened on the sixth day of, they gathered twice as much bread, two ermines for each one. And all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moshe. He said to them, this is that which Yahweh has spoken tomorrow is the solemn rest and the holy Shabbat to Yahweh. This is that which Yahweh has spoken tomorrow is the solemn rest and the holy Shabbat to Yahweh. Bake that which you would want to bake and boil that which you would want to boil and all that remains over, lay up for yourselves to be kept into the morning. They laid it up until the morning and Moshe asked and it didn't become foul, neither was there any worm in it. Now, this is speaking also about the, um, the bread that they gathered up. Moshe said, eat that, that today, for today is a Shabbat to Yahweh. Today you shall find it in, you shall not find it in the field. Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day is the Shabbat. In there you, it shall be none. All right. That's the first incident. Was there anything wrong with the quail? Nothing. Did it bring them a blessing or a curse? Did it defile their temples? Yah commanded them to eat it, did he not? Why would Yah defile us? Okay. So, why did Yah do this? We're going to go to the second account. Remember, Yah be Elohim. We're in Deuteronomy. Give me a second. Deuteronomy 8 and 1. You shall observe to do all the commandments which I command you this day that you may live and multiply and go in to possess the land which Yahweh swore to your fathers. You shall remember all the way which Yahweh your Elohim has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you to prove you to know what is in your heart. That was the issue, to know what was in their heart. First of all, they were ungrateful, right? And they didn't have faith in Yah, right? Whether they would keep his commandments or not. He humbled you and allowed you to hunger and fed you with manna. That was on purpose, y'all. 
Did he intend for us to meet and eat manna the rest of our lives? No, he did not. Did he never intend for us to eat the meat later? No, we did not. How do we keep the Passover the second year then? Which you didn't know, neither did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread only, but by the everything, every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh does man live. That was the reason. Had nothing to do with meat, y'all. For the kingdom of heaven is not in eating and drinking. Food for the belly, belly for the food. It will all come to nothing. Do not put your... Thoughts and strange doctrine for food, for that does nothing for the heart. But heal your heart, strengthen your heart with grace. Who fed you in the wilderness with matter which your fathers didn't know that he might humble you and that he might prove you to do you good at the latter end. Obviously, he didn't intend to keep us in this situation, it was just a testing. Unless you say in your heart, this was the heart matter. This is what he wanted to humble us for. My power and the might of my hands has gotten me all this wealth. What was the wealth? What was the wealth? The herd, y'all. That was the wealth of Abraham. The herds, the livestock. But you shall remember Yahweh your Elohim, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth. That was the whole point, to turn our whole faith to turn our whole heart and mind to knowing that he is the power and all things come from him and he is able to give us all things. That's what we just read in Genesis. Now I have given you all things, right? But you shall remember Yahweh Elohim who gives you the power to get wealth that you may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers as it as at this day. So now we have the fifth temptation. That was the third temptation was not necessarily about meat, but it was about hunger altogether. The second one was water. The fifth temptation, right, is Exodus 17. And all the congregations of the children of Israel traveled from the wilderness of sin by their journeys according to Yahweh's commandment and encamped in Rephidim. But there was no water for the people to drink. Therefore, the people quarrel with motion and say, give us water to drink. What was bad? It was evil for them to ask for water? What? Was it evil for them to lust for water? Where was the evil in this? Their attitude about it. Therefore, the people quarrel with Moses and say, give us water to drink. They didn't even ask. They demanded it. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test Yahweh? The people were thirsty for water there and the people murmured against this is the second time. He already showed them the first time I can give them meat. So I'm going to show you that there was two incidences of water and it was two incidences of quarrel. They did it the first time he gave them water. What happened this time? They, he struck the rock. Anger. And when, when they drank, did it bless them? No, it didn't. So is now, now we can't drink water? The, the water killed us? Did the water kill us? No. Moshe put some anger in the water. Yah was angry, he put it in the water and these fools was ungrateful. He put ungratitude in the water. He gave them their hearts. For out of the heart runs the issues of life, the rivers of life, right? Now y'all over here trying to uh, magnify magnitude, uh, magnify Kagan water and purify the water, but your heart is the magnet that will do it. So now the water is not good? No, it was their heart. Same scenario. We had two water, two meat incidences, y'all. The first one, he said, all right, I'm trying to humble y'all, but he intended to give us the water. He intended to continue to give us water, but it was the way we was dealing with it, right? Why do you curl with me? Why do you test Yahweh? The people were thirsty for water there and the people murmured against Moses and said, why have you brought us up out of Egypt? And they kept comparing it to what? Their bondage. Like that's a smack in the face, right? Y'all know they're doing that now, right? Negroes, I delivered you from everything you was crying for. What are you talking about? That's enough. Even to keep smacking Yahweh Egypt. Let us go back to Egypt. What? 
You just cried all day long. You cried so much that y'all heard the tears and delivered you. And now you're going to get out here and be like, we was better in Egypt. Could we go back to Egypt to kill our children and our livestock with thirst or what? What? Moses cried to Yahweh saying, what shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. Yahweh said to Moshe, walk on before the people and take the elders of Israel with you and take the rod in your hand and which, um, which you struck the now and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock in the Horeb. You shall strike the rock and water will come out of it and the people may drink. Moshe did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the name of that place Massah and Meribah because the children of Israel quarreled and because they tested Yahweh saying, is Yahweh among us or not? That's the issue. All right. That's why right, you tell them. So the eighth temptation was what? Quail again. We had two issues with water and two issues with meat. Was it the water? Was it the quail? No. Let's see. Numbers. Once again, Israel, if anyone is skimming through me, please go back. The Exodus account of the quails is not the same numbers account. There are two different accounts of quails. He gave us quail the first time, and it represented Yahushua's coming in the flesh of the evening, and I give you the bread of life in the, in the morning, and therefore now you can see the glory of Yah. It was also to prove the counting of the week, to prove Shabbat. Numbers, second account. The people were complaining in the ears of Yahweh. When Yahweh heard it, his anger was kindled and Yahweh's fire burnt among them and consumed some of the out, outskirts of the camp. The people cried to Moshe and Moshe prayed to Yahweh and that fire abated. The name of the place was called Taborah because Yahweh's fire burnt among them. The mixed multitude that was among them lusted exceedingly. Was it just lust? exceedingly there's a difference y'all can see when somebody is eating something excessively this is wicked and just desiring it from a natural desire because we see that he said you need all of me to your desire but exceedingly why they keep missing out on that this is different than even the first one excessively exceedingly this is covetousness and greed in effect anybody now we all like some fried chicken every now and then i might eat fried chicken well, more than now because y'all but i'm eating fried chicken maybe twice a year right twice a year otherwise i don't do fried chicken like that but i do like my fried chicken in house sauce homemade fried chicken we don't do that kentucky fried and all of that homemade right that's how i like it crispy and all that with a whole bottle of hot sauce all over it i like that but after I done finished eating two pieces or maybe three, don't you put chicken in my face another day. Right? Anybody ever ate chicken so much that it's like you want to puke at the... <laughs> But that's for anything, y'all. Eat spaghetti more than three days a week. You, uh, uh, get that out my face. Right? Even wine. There's a time I'm like, uh, uh, no more. I don't want to see wine for a whole month. <laughs> <laughs> right name it name your best food and see if you can eat that longer than three days and you don't get sick of it and if you do push yourself to eat that past the third day you is sick you sick right so the mixed multitude that was amongst us lusted exceedingly and the children of Israel also wept again and said, who will give us flesh to eat? So we now was influenced by the mixed multitude that was with us, right? We remember the fish, which we ate in Egypt for nothing. What? They didn't mention um, quail? They asked for quail? No, they remember what they ate in Egypt. They had access to a lot of fish. They wanted fish this time, y'all. It wasn't even quail that they asked for. You see how they lying by omission? We remember the quail, the chicken, the fish. 
which we ate in Egypt for nothing, right? The cucumbers. Ooh, we. It was a cucumber. Go ahead. Let me, you know, don't give me a cucumber. Mm -hmm. Give me a cucumber, right? We got some right here. No fish tonight. We had that uh, last Shabbat. The cucumbers, the fish that we ate for that meaning that we didn't have to hurt them or anything. Just go fish free. The cucumbers. Mm -hmm. The melons. Isn't that what that Negro was eating on his Shabbat? The melons. Y'all, I'm eating food life. I like on these melons. And now every time he teaches, he eating, y'all. Every time, because he's hungry. This Negro is hungry, right? <laughs> y'all, do I bar barely eat when I'm teaching, right? I can go hours without eating because I'm on what? The spirit. I mean, how many hours have you seen me go without eating? A full day without eating. They be like, eat. I be like, no, nah, I'm in the word. <laughs> right? I'm in the word. It's a distraction. They're like, oh, oh. they not in the spirit. They're not in the spirit. The watermelons, that's what that Negro was eating. I joined you with a cucumber to show you how much I got crush on you. But my watermelon with your cucumber. My, my cucumbers with your watermelon. And the leeks. What is a leek? It's a type of an onion, right? And an onions, probably scallions, right? And the garlic. Oh my goodness. What was they lusting for, y'all? Flavoring. Sugar and flavoring. They wanted to put the garlic and the onions on the fish and make melon and cucumber juice. Ain't that what we make? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Another seed. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that when we were drinking that red juice that y'all saw, y'all? That was like, uh, that was cucumber and melon juice, was it not? Yeah. <laughs> right? Look how they lied on the story. But now we've lost our appetite. Appetite. It was about the flavoring of the food, right? There is nothing at all except this manner to look at. Now they load the wonderful thing that y'all gave them, right? The manner that came out of heaven, angels food, right? Now the manner resembled coriander seed and it appeared like that of the gum resin. What is happening here? Is this about me? Is this about meat? Not at all. They didn't even ask for the quail, y'all. They asked for fish. The people walked around and gathered it, right? Ground it in, in a hammer and crushed it in the mortar, then boiled in the cooking pots and shaped it into cakes. It tasted like pastry baked with fine oil. No flavor, right? Y'all be like, no. now how many of y'all could just eat plain bread with no butter in it, no sugar, no salt, put some garlic and butter on that, right? No onions on it, right? What? If I fed y'all bread, wonders bread, y'all be like, y'all ain't got no jelly, no peanut butter? Ain't no cream cheese to put on it? No strawberry jam? What? Right? The people walked around and gathered it, but I, I said that, right? When the dew fell on the camp at night, the manna was fall, would fall with it. All right. So we're in Numbers 11 and 10. Moshe heard the people weeping throughout their families, every man at the door of his tent, and the anger of Yahweh was kindled greatly, and Moshe was displeased, right? He walked around in secret. Well, not really in secret. He didn't know he was walking around. He could hear everything from everybody's tent. At night, I'm sick of this manner. I'm sick of this manner. And just remembering, girlfriend, you know when we used to eat the duck for action, man? Girl, we would have all the seasonings in Babylon. They don't have it over here in Egypt like that and in Israel, right? What's the little seasons and all the butter and the, all that, whatever y'all put on the food, right? The barbecue, right? Man, remember that? Man, how we gonna get that up in here? 
Listen, they heard he heard them being what? Ungrateful. Not giving thanksgiving, not appreciating what they got. Right? Moshe said to Yahweh, Have you treated? Why have you treated with your servants so badly? Why haven't I found favor in your sight that you lay the burden of all these people on me? Have I conceived? Imagine what it felt like Moshe getting up, saying, Hallelujah, praise Yah. And y'all like, Yeah, Hallelujah. We got eat manna again. Right? He brought us out here to eat manna. Oh, my goodness. Right? Have I brought them forth? That you should tell me, carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a nursing infant that I'm supposed to supply them with everything that they need and want to the land which you swore to their fathers. Where could I get meat to give to all these people? For they weep to me saying, give us meat that we may eat. They weren't asking for quail, y'all. They asked for fish. I am not able to bear all this people alone because it is too heavy for me. If you treat me this way, please kill me now right now. Please kill me now, Father. If I have found favor in your sight, don't let me see this wretchedness. Y'all, they was, they was coming for me. Yeah? All right, numbers. Quail of the plate. Now, at wind, sent by Yahweh, came up, drove in quail from the sea, and brought them near the camp, about two cubits above the surface of the ground, for a day's journey in every direction around the camp. It was an overabundance, y'all. Yeah, yeah, they they exceedingly lusted, so he gave them what? Exceedingly overabundance. He didn't give them according to a rational desire. He gave them according to their irrational, exceedingly desire, right? And it was fish that they asked for. He gave them quail. Shalom, shalom, Israel. Shalom. shalom to the remnant. This is part two of the recording um, of what we uh, went over last week concerning the quail, but uh, the spirit wasn't satisfied and uh, had more to reveal um, because of the speediness of me putting the piece together. I missed out on some scriptures that's very important in telling. And uh, we came to a partial conclusion about what about the quails? But at the end of the day, let Yah tell us what it is, right? Because the answer is all there. Yah does not leave us without the truth, the whole truth, right? And he says, for those that search out his word, mark his word and seek it out. And so this is what Yah has taught me about being thorough in his word. Let his word answer the question, right? So we read all of what we read about the quails, and this is where I am going to pick back up. Uh, let me make sure that is it. I'm gonna pick back up here in Numbers 11, and we're gonna continue. And we're gonna let the Bible answer the question about the quails. Numbers 11, verse 31. And a wind from Yahweh went out and bought quails from the sea and let them fall by the camp about a day's journey on this side and a day's journey on the other side. That's a lot of quail, y'all. Y'all, imagine that. Think about it. We just read past this. A day's journey of quail that fell all across on this side of the camp, all on, on that side. And they filled that space up. A day's journey on the other side around the camp and about two cubits above the surface of the earth. Now, what could have caused that? Mind you, there was multiple disasters that was coming, uh, that was happening from the time of the Exodus in Egypt to now. Now, one would deduce that to um, a seismic earthquake, volcano eruption at the sea, um, in the Mediterranean Sea. And I tend to believe that. I tend to believe that y'all's judgment and wrath when he destroys a nation or when he's going to reset a nation, always happens with an earthquake and a volcano eruption. His word says that. And I believe that that sets off a string of what some would call um, natural disasters, but they're no, they're supernatural disasters. And um, what we don't know is that all 
that has happened was already destined to happen according to Yah's word. He's in charge of nature. Nature's not doing its own thing by itself. It does play by the rules, but Yah can bend the rules how he wants to because he controls the wind, air, the fire, the snow, the hail, the electricity, the lava, the mountains. He controls it all, right? But think about this. The people rose up all that day and all that night and all the next day and gathered quail. So first thing that happened here was they went off the path that Yah set for them how to gather, right? They was only supposed to gather a certain amount of what? A day when it came to the uh, manor. But, huh? Just enough for the day. But something took place here, right? They, first of all, they thought they wasn't gonna get none, right? He only gave it to him one time since, I believe this might've been somewhat, um, I don't know how many months later, right? We already saw that they were not just uh, desiring chicken or quail. They asked for fish, cucumbers, leeks, garlic, onions, right? And, and, and melons, right? The variety, it was about them losing their appetite altogether. So the people rose up all day and all night and all the next day and they gathered the quails. He who gathered least gathered 10 homers. Greedy. That, that was greedy. Y'all was trying to show them that I'm gonna give you your daily bread, right? This is the walk of faith. So don't worry about what you're gonna eat tomorrow. I'm gonna provide your daily bread. But they were walking in a certain amount of fear that they won't see no chicken again, no quail again. So let's gather, let's, let's stock it up. Let's store it up. Right. And this, this, all of this is a lesson for what we got to prepare for what was coming y'all. Right. Cause you can't see the food in front of you. Right. You're going to walk in today in ungratitude about what we're going to eat tomorrow. Right. How we're going to eat. He, he who gathered least gathered 10 omers, greed, and they spread them all abroad for themselves around the camp. They, just, they spread them out to try to do what? To preserve them, to dry them up and preserve them what we call jerky, <laughs> quail jerky. Um, and while the flesh was yet between their teeth, before it was chewed, the anger of Yahweh was kindled against the people. And Yahweh struck the people with a very great plague. Now I'm skipping some verses here because I'm gonna go back and show you where the answer is on what took place, right? We see how they gathered the food. We Imagine the behavior, right? All day and all night. They was work, that, that was work, y'all. They had to work hard to gather that for two days, all day and all night. Spread them out, prepare them. M mind you, when he says spread them out and prepare them, they clean in, they pluck in. It's a, they was working day and night. I'm going to show you the lesson in this, where they went wrong with everything, how they approached this, right? So before it was even swallowed, yet it wasn't even in their teeth yet. The anger of God, what angered Yah? He saw the way they dealt with it, the whole situation. The name of that plague. So he, he struck him with a great plague. Now I said, what struck him that they instantly got? I, I, I said heart attack. And I'm still standing on some of them had a heart attack, but there's something else that took place that wasn't instant. We're talking about 30 days of this. And I actually said it, right? I actually said it, but we're going to come back to it. 34, and the name of that place was called Kibrot. Hata'aba, because they, are, they buried the people who lost it, right? From Kibroth, Hata'aba, the people traveled to Hezeroth, and they stayed in Hezeroth. I'm in 17. But they continued to sin against him, rebelling in the desert against the Most High. They willfully tested Elohim by demanding the food they craved. I want y'all to notice, they they demanded it. They demanded it. I wonder if y'all doing like that now, right? This was something that, this was a lesson that I was telling us about when we came here, about there's a difference between asking, right? And demanding and complaining. There's a difference for food they crave. They spoke, they spoke against Elohim saying, this is what they were saying. Can Elohim really prepare a table in the wilderness? It was a test. It wasn't that if they would have asked without the lust, without the, without the craving, without the um, demand, 
without the crying, without the ungratitude, he might have gave it to them, y'all. Not to not to fulfill their lust, but to fulfill their need. Can Elohim really prepare a table in the wilderness? Man, they tested y'all again. So we got this situation where we going back in the wilderness, y'all. Can he prepare the table? Can he give us everything we need? When he struck the rock, water gushed out in the torrent's rage, right? But can he also give bread or supply, um, supply his people with meat? So, okay, I'm in numbers. So I'm sorry, I'm in Psalm 78. So this is a recount, I'm in Psalm 78. So they demanded, right? That was the whole issue. They was testing y'all, really? Right, do magic, y'all, let me see this, right? When he struck the rock, water gushed out of the torrents and rage, but can he also give bread or supply his people with me? Therefore Yahweh heard and was filled with wrath. So a fire was kindled against Jacob and his anger flared against Israel because they did not believe in Elohim or rely on his salvation. I want you to understand that the words that they spoke and the attitude that they had let Yah know that they didn't believe in him, nor did they rely. The relying is rest in your faith that he is and that he can and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek it. That's what he's telling us to ask. So even if you find yourself against that scenario where, where your own eyes can't see how you're going to eat, there is an attitude by which you should walk in that day with Yah. If you know that you're walking right with Yah, that you believe in Yah and rely on his salvation, that he'll provide everything. Yet he commanded the clouds above, yet he showed them that I could. I can prepare the table, watch me do it. Yet he commanded the clouds above to open the doors of heaven. He rained down manna for them to eat. He gave them grain from heaven. Man ate the bread of angels. He sent them food in abundance. He stirred the east wind from the heavens and drove the south wind by his might. He rained meat on them like dust and winged birds like the sand of the sea. He filled them, he, he felt, he filled them in the midst of their camp and all around their dwelling. So they ate and were filled, for he gave them what they craved. What was it that they was really craving? Because they didn't ask for the quail. Huh? No, it wasn't the really what. It was the abundance, right? Yet before they had filled their desire, with the food still in their mouths, Elohim flared against them and he slew their fattest, Bemish Manehem, the fattest of them, and bend it or crouch down, right? The young men of Israel. What could it have been? Don't answer. Think about it. Now we know that the fattest would mean the obese of them. And so those that were obese already had an issue. Before they came out, they already overate. They probably had high cholesterol, high blood pressure, sugar diabetes, hormone imbalance, heart problems, lung problems, all of that if, they, if they're fat, right? And bend it and crouch down. What does that mean, bend it and crouch down, right? How does it read in the King James English version? How does y'all's read? It's smote them or or subdue them, right? But the word is he kriah, right? And that means to crouch down. Same thing as, and the devil crouched down at the door, to bend over, to bow down, cut from kara, to bow down. What could have caused the fattest of them to die and the young ones to bend over? All right, don't answer that question. Y'all think y'all know? All right. I'm in uh, Psalms 106, another account, 13 yet. They soon forgot his works and failed to wait on his counsel. They craved intensively in the wilderness and tested Elohim in the desert. He granted their request, but set a wasting or a leanness upon them. What does y'all say? 
leanest into their soul, right? Anybody else got another interpretation? The word is a wasting and the leanest. What could it have been? All right, don't answer that. I'm going to give all y'all the chance to throw it out there, right? Don't say it out loud. Just keep, take note. What killed them? The quails? All right, so what killed them? What killed them? What killed them? All right. Let's find out the problem. This is what we have summed up in our reading. They complained and they demanded. That's half of y'all now. The way y'all live your whole life. Two, they lusted exceedingly and they craved intensively. Three, they cried for loss of appetite. Right? So mind you, it was months that they didn't eat meat. Y'all gave them meat and they've been eating manna. They cry because they lost their appetite. Y'all was doing something to their system and their mind, right? The body and the mind is working together. Four, they were unthankful for the manna, their daily bread. That sufficed them. Ungrateful. And the least of them gathered 10 omers, which was abundance, more than they needed on a daily basis. Didn't believe in Elohim, and they didn't rely on his salvation. That's the problem right now. That's the, that's the lesson. Check ourselves in this. Check ourselves in this right now at, in our return, because this is the lesson we got to get, even how we deal with food now. Right? So that was the problem. That was the problem. Okay, let's see. I'm going back to Numbers 11. The people received meat for a whole month. 18, say to the people, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. Tomorrow was the day he was going to rain the quail down like, like dust. He told the people to sanctify themselves against tomorrow. And you will eat meat. So everybody ate meat. The whole camp ate meat. What did it mean to sanctify themselves? Hold that thought. Because the ones that sanctified themselves, when they ate the meat, it didn't kill them or humble them or subdue them or they got sick. All right. Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow and you will eat flesh, all of you. For you have wept in the ears of Yahweh, saying, who will give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt, right? The mentality is about turning back. Looking backwards. Therefore, Yahweh will give you flesh and you will eat. You will not eat one day, nor two, nor five, neither 10 days, nor 20 days, but a whole month until it comes out at your nostril. What killed them? And it is a loathsome, nausea, disgusting, lezara to you. That's what he made it to them. After 30 days of eating this, I already, what killed them, y'all? Keep it, hold it, hold it, y'all doctors and nurses and people that have experienced, we've all experienced this. Not quite like this, but yes, all right? Because that you have rejected Yahweh who is among you and have wept before him saying, why did we come out of Egypt? All of that, what they did was a, cry for a return at the end of the day. I wish I was back in Egypt. And that was the biggest smack that they could have did in Yah's face when they cried for Yah to bring them out. Moshe faith staggered. 21, Moses said to the people among who I am are 600,000 men on foot. And you have said, I will give them flesh that they may eat a whole month. Shall flocks and herds be slaughtered for them to be sufficient or found for them? So y'all didn't let us eat the flocks because the herds that they came out would have not been sufficient. We would have ate all of those herds instantly. Mind you, this is not talking about quails where you can do one at a time. You start slaughtering flocks and herds, you got to consume all of that. That's a big piece of meat, right? Shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them? to be sufficient or found for them. Yahweh said to Moshe, has Yahweh's hand grown short 
How dare they act like I I to save them and I can't give them what they need? That don't make no sense. Now you will see whether my word will happen to you or not. So the solution was sanctify themselves. The sanctifying themselves was by changing or repenting of the evil thinking. And the evil thinking was anxiety, fear, and ingratitude. Did I say that right? Ingratitude, ingratitude for daily bread. All three of those was the mindset that they had that poisoned their own bellies. Anxiety and fear that they weren't going to get enough. There was not going to be no more. Y'all couldn't do it again and again. And they were ungrateful for what they had. This was what y'all were saying. Say, change your mind about everything you just said and eat. Set yourselves apart from the mentality that you approach me with when I give you this food. I'm gonna show you that this is Torah all the way around. This wasn't an incident just about the quail and the woodwork. This is what y'all has been teaching us the whole time, right? All right, that's the solution. The result of those that did not sanctify themselves, only those who lusted died, he slew the fattest. The young man was crouched over. It came out their noses. It became a nausea and a loathing to them. And the disease that killed them was a wasting and a leanness to their soul. What killed them, y'all? Okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Anybody got any guesses? Go ahead. Food poisoning. That's a thought. Huh? Diarrhea? You think it was diarrhea? Mm, I'm going to say no, not diarrhea. Uh-huh. Not it. Did I tell you? If I told you already, don't say that. Did I say something to you? Or what? Parasites? Let's see. What else? Heart attack? What else? Any other thoughts? Uh-huh. Choked? Choked? What else? Come on. Diabetes? Well, yeah, they had it was fear, stress, and anxiety. But what when you eat like that, what happens? All right, let me show you. Huh? All right, what killed them? I said some of them had a heart attack when they overate. They ate fast, right? Gastrointestinal disorder, acid reflux, excessive vomiting. They, the wasting away means they didn't even get it in their stomachs. They didn't. It, they they were malnourished. Stomach ache, indigestion, and heartburn by eating too much and eating fast and overeating. They couldn't even take it down. The fear and anxiety of how it knotted their stomachs up. They couldn't even digest it. It vomited back up. They kept trying to stuff it down. It vomited back up, and their bodies was rejecting it. Because it became a loathing in the north. It made them now choke too much and see if you don't die. And after a month of vomiting the food back up, after you try to get it down and you're vomiting back up, you lose the weight. And you become, that's what happens with me. Because I had no more faith in Yah. I was angry, fearful, ungrateful, and complaining about life. I gave you my testimony, y'all. My, my stomach tied up. And even though I ate the food, it would not go down. It kept coming back up. It burned them. It can't, and, and, and this, this is over, it's coming out their noses, out there, everything. Malnourished and under, that's what killed them, y'all. It didn't, they didn't even get the, their bodies were so disgusted now by it that it rejected it. But the ones that did not eat, eat like that, digested it and ate a reasonable portion in gratitude and love and thankful for Yah. That's the difference. So even though you sent it because of where it was, you know, what's it called? Those who ate it were able to receive it with thanksgiving rather than not supposed to eat it at all? He said you will eat. 
but sanctify yourselves against tomorrow, but you will eat. So those that change their mindset about everything, they wish they could get it, go back to Babylon, get the leeks and the onions, the cucumbers and the fish and, and uh, whatever, right? It was better in Babylon. I mean, be better in Egypt, right? Ultimately, it was an ungratitude for everything that he had done, right? But the gluttonous, once again, he slew the fattest. The way they eat, y'all seen the way gluttonous people eat? They stuff their mouths. Fat, you have a heart attack like that. They ate it so fast that they didn't even swap. They didn't even chew, y'all. They just swallowed it. Mm, 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 mm. And they ate it like that with anxiety that they weren't going to get no more. Or it wasn't going to be enough. But their bodies rejected it. Their bodies rejected it. The quail didn't kill them, y'all. Their own mind did. The food for thought. Can y'all see that? Or did I make it up or did y'all say it? And so let's check ourselves to see if that's the way we um, do. Once again, only those who exceedingly lusted. He slew the fattest. He crouched over. They had a crowd. Oh, oh, his stomach. Oh, yeah, stomach ate, y'all. Right? It came out their noses. It means they was gurgitating it back up. Reflux. Acid reflux. Nausea and a loathing. Their, their bodies didn't even want it anymore. And a wasting and a lease. Is it true? All right. The quails didn't kill them, Israel. Their thoughts did. Their mindset did. It's called food for thought. And that's the secret of life. The word of Yah. Now, I'm going to show you that this is the word of Yah. He said, Sanctify themselves, right? Well, this is what Yahushua said. In other words, Luke 12. And he said to his disciples, therefore, I tell you, don't be anxious for your life. What you will eat, nor yet for your body, what you will wear. Life is more than food. And the body is more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They don't sow. They don't reap. They have no warehouse or barn. And Elohim feeds them. See? They wanted to store it up, but Yah wanted to feed them on a daily basis to show, to, to, to prove his faith and his salvation and to how to totally walk by faith. You don't have to work for it. Slave for it. Stock it up and store. He doesn't want us to live like that. Now, the Christians teach us that if you got a supply, a barn house of it, you're blessed in the lower world. But though, when he really wants to return us to the kingdom, to 100% rely on him, it's called your daily bread. Right? Do you believe this or not? Right? Which of you being anxious can add a cubit to his height? Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Let me not skip this. Consider the ravens. They don't sow. They don't reap. That's what we was doing. Reaping for days, all day and night. They do not have a warehouse or a barn. Stocked up. They stocked it up, y'all. And Elohim feeds them. How much more valuable are you than the birds? What? We are more valuable than the animals, Malachi? That's right. We are not equal. We are more valuable than animals. That what Yahoshua said. Ooh, we got to throw away loot. Throw that out. That's what Yahoshua said. He didn't say it. So how is some other book going to come around talking about the animals are our brothers and sisters? Well, if they are brothers and sisters, why we can't mate with them? Which of you being anxious can add a cubit to his height? If then you aren't able to do even the least things, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They don't toil, neither do they spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if this is how Elohim clothes the grass of the field, which today exists and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you? Oh, you of little faith, don't seek 
what you will eat or what you will drink. Neither be anxious. That's what happens. Yahushua taught this. And you will never see that kind of miracle happen until you walk by it. For the nations of the world seek after all these things, but your father knows that you need these things. But seek Elohim's kingdom and all these things will be added to you. Don't be afraid, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom and everything in it. Amen. So that's what I got to say. What about the quails? I think we had another crush down today, right? Crushing hard. Crushing hard. Yah's crushing with his, because his word is like a hammer that breaks the pot in pieces, right? That's right. His word is the crusher. And Talia not speaking nothing but his word at the end of the day. And let his word speak. And the spirit of truth is a testimony to it at the end of the day. Amen. So are we clear about the quail? Yeah. All right. Anybody else that's listening to the message, you should be clear now too. The quails didn't kill them. They minds did. Amen. And that's the word of Yah. All right, Israel, this is the end of this lesson. That's right. I'm crushing on Malachi. And I got a couple of more crushes to finish on him before I'm done. And then I'll be crushing on somebody else. Yes. And so until then, Israel, wait for the next lesson. Um, got some real important things to talk about and consider in Yah's word. I'm not done with Malachi. And I know a lot of y'all are asking me why I, have I not dealt with Yaki yet? Don't worry, it's coming. Amen. Shalom, shalom to you.